Breaking our campsite after a week of staying near the Vermilion Cliffs, we wound and twisted our way through the rutted road to the main highway in preparation to head towards Lee's Ferry and then Horseshoe Bend and finally onto Page, Arizona. Marvy was not in any condition to wrestle with the gate this time, so that was left up to me now to open the gate and then drive through and then close the gate uh, after we have left uh, the Vermilion Cliff campsites that we were at. And in only a few short miles, we found ourselves at the entranceway to Lee's Ferry National Park. Uh, we stopped at a very fun uh, side pullover where there were a lot of these interesting balanced rocks. Now, for those of you who do not like the idea of boondocking and prefer campsites, the National Park Service does have a campsite at Lee's Ferry, but you may want to visit their website and check about making reservations in advance, especially during the peak season. But for us, we followed the road down to the river. And once again, Lee's Ferry is one of the only spots that you can actually access the Colorado River between the Glen Canyon Dam in Page, Arizona and uh, the other side of the Grand Canyon. Okay, so we made it down to Lee's Ferry. We're on our way up towards Lake Powell and we were camping up on the Vermilion Cliff. So it's quite a beautiful morning and Lee's Ferry is one of the only places, uh, it's quite historical, Google it, and uh, uh, gives you a view of the Colorado. So let's go take a look. Oh. Rainbow trout, ooh. All right, so let's see what the sign says. It's, it was quite a climb from the bluffs up ahead here. Uh, we had to come down quite a ways through the balanced rock and the boulder fields. Looks like people are set up to do some fishing. And here's the, the actual Colorado River here. Now this water is very cold because it's coming out of the bottom of the reservoir of Lake Powell. So it's a family doing some fishing over here. It's a great way to catch breakfast at uh, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, you know, there's no mistaking uh, the, the smell of a clean river. After uh, being on the beach for five years in Mexico and being where there's no water, just to be down here where there's fresh water uh, takes me back to my old kayaking and whitewater days. Um, it's just an unmistakable, wonderful smell of fresh water. Uh, but anyway, here's uh, the Colorado.
Okay, here's an interesting point. I'm uh, um, sitting very close to the Colorado. Uh, the uh, Perea Riffle is what this is called. And what it is, is um, by, by river, it's only about 15 miles uh, to Lake Powell and the Glen Canyon Dam. And this is actually the first rapids um, that if people are rafting into the Grand Canyon, which is quite the distance this way, uh, this is really the first rapids they, they face. Now, they're not really rapids. Uh, uh, we would call this a class one or a class two, maybe a class two on the east coast. Uh, on the west coast it may or here uh, with the Colorado it's probably not even considered a rapid but this is the first bit of whitewater type activity that rafters get and a lot of the, the rapids on the Grand Canyon like this one are caused from boulders and floods and rain coming off the cliffs and uh, side canyons and being pushed and tumbled into the water forming the rapids so some of those huge rapids in the colorado river through the grand canyon that you might have seen are usually the result of huge boulders and rocks uh, because of erosion and floods get fallen into the river creating the rapids they're not formed by like a drop shelf uh, uh type of a rapid after spending some time down in Lee's Ferry, we climbed up out of the canyon and up over this beautiful pass and prepared to drop into the town of Page, Arizona. But before that, we have one more short stop we wanted to put onto this video this week, and that would be of Horseshoe Bend. Now, we didn't spend a lot of time there, tremendous amount of people and a heavy wind, but we did do some videos, so we'd like to go ahead and take some time and show you the videos of uh, Horseshoe Bend. Now it's important to realize that this used to be free and it wasn't wasn't until just this year that they started to charge $10 just to park. And I think that's a result of the fact that they made Horseshoe Bend so close to the highway that it attracts so many people. Marvie to get up this early uh, we're the only ones here we're ignore those people um, we're the only ones here and uh, it's just a solitude is just unbearable it's just you can hear oh the wind whispering through the pine trees okay maybe not pine trees but um, anyway that's where we're going down there Okay, there's a few people here. Let's go down the trail and take a look at Horse Horse Shoe Bend. Okay, Marvie's making sure I don't run into people. We're getting closer to Horseshoe Park, Horseshoe Bend. We'll cue the music, uh, the uh, crescendo. Uh, once we get there, we'll save that for the, uh, we'll give you a taste of it right here. That's all. Okay, so, so here we go. Cue the adventure or 